So I managed to get five layers. Now this top one will take the chisels like that. The second layer will take skinnier things because this is a little bit skinnier. Take rulers and whatnot, they're pretty skinny. The third one will take my marking gauges in there like that. And the bottom two I just made because I had this spare material and I've just made gaps for something, carving chisels, any, any other things that I may or may not have into the future. I'm using a hack method to glue this up. I'm using PVA glue along with super glue and accelerator just so that the accelerator and super glue acts as the clamps. It's a very hack method but it is a lot easier than having to mess around with clamps and because it's just a little shop projects I'm not ashamed of myself this time but I don't do it very often. It does work though. So then this one goes on top of that and obviously I don't know where to put the glue on this one here so if I put glue here, here, here and here it'll just be in the right spot when I put that one over so I don't put the glue on that one obviously. Spray this one with the activator. Alright so there's one chisel holder, chisel goes in. All good, works. And now with these five blanks glued up, I'm just going to trim the ends here and flush up the top and bottoms just so that they're a nice clean unit. I can grab the tools as is the way that this is now, but they are a little bit close together. So what I want to do is I want to splay these out slightly, which gives more room around the tool just to grab nice and easily. And I'll do the same with these ones also. So I'm going to splay them out by 10 degrees and then the next two out by 20 degrees. And that should work out quite well, keeping it all fairly compact, but still easily grabbed. It bloody sucks when that happens. It's so much better when the saw blade just throws it out of the way. At least I don't have to stop the saw then. <laughs> Alright, so that's looking really good at the moment. I've got a couple of bits of timber here that I've machined up to use as the sides. So they'll go on there like that. And I think I'll shoot some dowels through and through to lock it all together, hold it in place. And I've left them long out the front so that I can add a little bit of a tray for things like my tape measure or my marking knife. And I'll put a lip at the front here so that the, the marking knife can't roll out just like that.
right, so everything's coming up swimmingly. It's all good. It's flat on the bottom, and that was a mistake. I forgot about that. To put a tray into the front here, what I wanted to do is I wanted to put a groove into the sides and slide a bit of plywood straight through all the way under it. But that means all of this centre section had to raise up, or the sides had to drop down. But because they're perfectly flat on the bottom, what I'm going to do instead is I'm still going to put a bit of 5mm ply or 4mm ply on the bottom. And instead of bringing it out to the edge, I'm going to set it in by 3mm, stain the edge of the plywood black so that when this goes down onto the bench, that'll be raised up by the 3 or 4mm, whatever the thickness of the plywood is, and leave a little black shadow line under it. It's not as good as what I should have done, but it'll be good enough because that's what I'm going to do. I've got the two sides taped together just so that I can shape them at the same time so that they end up at least very, very similar. They don't have to be exactly the same, but so long as they're similar, it's good enough. Happy days. Too easy. Aha, uh -huh. I've been caught in the act. See, if all of my tools were in this thing, I could just pick this up, move it out of the way, and then I could have a clear bench right here where I need to work so I can start playing flat panels. But all my crap's in the way. So I'm only putting glue into the dowel holes. I'm not going to put glue all over this end grain because that end grain connects to the long grain of the sides like so and that becomes a very weak glue joint. There's no, there's no point to do it.
So you can see that I've drilled into all of these center dividers. I sort of drilled on an angle so that I didn't pop out the sides, but I've got a fair amount of meat either side, so I was pretty safe. And then straight down the middle of there. So I add a little bit of glue and we're off and racing. So I've got my drill set to a very low torque so that as soon as it, it doesn't want to spin with much pressure. So I'm not going to strip these tiny little screws out. Throw a coat of finish on this and it will look pretty good, not bad. This red gum's gonna look nice, Zach, oh yeah. All right, quick change of plans. I said I was gonna go outside and spray some finish on this, so I went to pick it up and move it outside. Do you see the problem? Block of timber, make some handles, quick smart. Plonk. And there we have it. I've got chisels, I've got rulers, I've got marking gauges, vernier calipers, flush cut saw, square, mallet. It's all there, it's all ready to go and when I need to get it out of my way, well, I just move it out of your way. Or if I want to move... Shh, I'm talking buddy. If I want to move to another bench in my workshop, I can just pick the whole thing up and go over there. It's too easy. So I think that's pretty good. It hits my function perfectly. If you think it's pretty good, a big old thumbs up would be very much appreciated. If you want to see more builds like this or bigger furniture builds that I have coming up, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below so that you get notified when I release a new video. And if you want to build one of these yourself, because it's so awesome, I've released a set of plans and there'll be a link in the description below so that you can get a set of plans so that you can build one yourself. But until then, Thanks for watching and I'll catch us later. I only have to make sure I put everything back as I use them. How hard could it be? <laughs> I'll do it.